Relax, son. Due to the advances in modern dentistry, this is going to be real short and real sweet. Open wide. And a one, two, three. Little Johnny Rainbow, little Johnny Rainbow, happy little Johnny Rainbow. Hi everyone and welcome to Short and Sweet this beautiful Sunday. Thanks for joining. I am super excited to introduce our next director. His name is Jason Willis. He is from Tucson, Arizona. He's a filmmaker and animator, an editor, a musician, and a collector of nonsense. I'm going to let Jason introduce his film, Catnip Egress to Oblivion. I dedicate this film to all you cat lovers out there and to all the cats. Apparently, there is such a thing as too much catnip. Enjoy. Jason Willis, everybody. <laughs> catnip. <laughs> He's not over here. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Hi, short and sweet Cape Town. My name is Jason Willis, and I'm sitting here with Nova, one of the stars of my film, Catnip, Egress to Oblivion. My short is patterned after various social guidance films of the late 1960s and early 1970s, which were shown in classrooms to students in an effort to help them navigate various tricky social terrain like sexual activity, uh, health and safety, and drug abuse. On the technical side of things, I wrote, directed, edited, uh, did the music and the post-processing myself, and on the other side of the camera, I was lucky enough to work with a wonderful cast of cats and human beings. The humans are my friends Geo, Terry, and Neil, all of whom you will be hearing from or seeing over the course of the next seven minutes. I shot almost all of the film with a Canon 5D Mark III. There's some iPhone footage in there as well. And I edited it in Final Cut Pro 10 with some post-processing and After Effects, and there's a little bit of Photoshopery around the edges. The complete budget for the film was $25, uh, all of which was spent on catnip for the cast. And I think you will agree with me when I say that that $25 is clearly visible up on the screen in the final product. Uh, okay, that's it from me. I hope you guys enjoy it, and thanks so much for having me here in Cape Town. Goodbye. Catnip. It goes by many names. There are approximately 250 species of catnip, and this figure doesn't include hybrids. But all of these substances have one thing in common. The active ingredient, nepetalactone cycloalkane an essential oil found in the leaves and stem of the plant that causes wildly unpredictable behavior in its users, characterized by hallucinations, illusions, and distortions of both perception and thinking. That's catnip. <laughs> Over the centuries, thousands of things have been written about catnip. In fact, there is even a story of an executioner who would have to chew on the root of catnip so that he could bring himself to kill. But despite the years of combined scientific research, we still do not truly know exactly what it is that catnip does. Not only are the chromosome questions unanswered, but we are still not able to predict in advance whether a catnip user at any particular moment in their life is going to have a good trip or a bad one. This is what catnip looks like. But what can't be seen is where the drug has its real effect in the mind. Those two inches of inner space between the front of the snoot and the back of the cranium. The results are mercurial, much in the same way that the psychoactive chemicals contained within catnip can be erratic and inconsistent, cats who react to nepetalactone differ in their individual responses. But this much is known. Once ingested, catnip goes off like an atomic bomb within those 300 million neurons sitting inside a cat's cerebral cortex. And just like atomic energy, the results vary wildly from situation to situation. When inhaled or snorted, catnip will stimulate a cat. And once stimulated, users exhibit a range of behaviors that may include sniffing, licking and chewing the plant, as well as head, chin, cheek, and body rubbing. 
This psychosexual reaction lasts for 5 to 15 minutes and cannot be evoked again for an hour, at which point the cat may require a higher dose in order to achieve the same degree of intoxication. Some users drool and roll about on the floor. Others become exceedingly hyperactive, and many will become aggressive, picking fights with other cats after their senses have been altered by the drug. When eaten, the herb becomes a powerful sedative, tranquilizing the user to the point of near catatonia and making it more difficult for them to effectively react to situations within their environment. Otherwise normal felines may react to catnip doses by seeing strange patterns of wildly moving lights. Time may appear to stand completely still, and colors, shapes, smells, tastes, textures, the whole range of things that can be seen, heard, touched, and tasted take on other distortions that can appear completely and utterly real. After several years of research, we have determined that there are many similarities between the catnip experience and schizophrenia. However, our current opinion about catnip is that it works as more of an amplifier, a catalyst, that amplifies the psyche and mental state of the user. And what of the user's mental state? Due to the almost infinite variables, it is absolutely unpredictable as to who will have a bad experience or when they will have it. But everyone who takes catnip, even its most vocal supporters, admit that there is always the risk of a bad trip, a bummer, or even a flip out. It can be a real kick, or it can be a kick in the head. In the head. The user may see distorted beauty or may tumble into a private hell. The most dangerous act can seem attractive and easy to accomplish. In a bad trip, instant insanity, a never-never land of seemingly no return. For every good trip, there are risks as well. Nepetalactone flashbacks and hallucinations can occur after the original dose, and the user may not even know what is happening. The drug is easy to procure, and catnip dealers can be found peddling their wares in almost any major city, selling the substance in equal doses to both the experienced user and the novice. And since there is no regulation on catnip, it's impossible to predict the dosage or to know if the drug has been cut with sawdust, hay, or other mystery fillers used by unscrupulous dealers to beef up its bulk and color. The nip may be dirty or contaminated, and by the time the user finds out, it's too late to turn back. <coughs> Consider this cat. Chances are that she will get well again, well enough to leave the tub. But whether she will ever truly be the same again, have the same personality, the same ambitions, the same drive to hunt, to love, to get along with others, that we won't know for a long time. In the end, it may be that with catnip, too much is unknown. The answers aren't all in yet, and research continues. But is the risk worth it? That's a question every cat will have to answer for themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah.